do we want to say before or against the Alabama law? All it is is collecting data. It's hard to collect data when people are not forthcoming. It makes it really hard to get accurate data. Um, before this. AP scores are really high stakes for students because when students earn a qualifying score on an AP exam, that can translate into college credit and that college credit can save them and their family's tuition money. So there's a lot of pressure in the AP context, right? And so my team and I wanted to understand whether or not teachers could use project-based learning in this high stakes environment and also feel confident that their students will be able to perform well in the AP examination. So it's not uncommon in an AP course to have a project or two, but we're trying to drive the course through projects, which is to say through experiential learning. So in our courses, students are very often involved in a simulation. In the case of the AP Gov course, they're taking the role of a Supreme Court justice or somebody running a campaign or running for office. What he wants to do is reinforce sharing the wealth among people who didn't earn it. Reinforce the already existing program. It's different than any kind of class where you would just have a lecture, do a worksheet or an activity maybe make a poster at the end and take a test. This is structured completely differently so that from the very beginning, students have a role that they play and a need to know. I am the principal investigator of the Knowledge in Action Efficacy Study. This study was a really huge endeavor. We wanted to learn about effects on scores. We wanted to learn how the approach would work for students from lower income households, for students from higher income households. In addition to test scores, we also wanted to understand what happens in classrooms. Are teachers changing their practice when teachers have access to Knowledge in Action resources? What do changes look like in classrooms and what do teachers and students think? And we ended up partnering with five of the largest, predominantly urban districts around the country. Three of the districts served a majority of students from low-income households. And four of the five districts served a majority of students who were black or Hispanic who have been traditionally underserved. We were working with both AP US government teachers and AP environmental science teachers. We randomly assigned teachers to either have access to Knowledge in Action, that was our treatment group, or traditional AP classes. That was the control group. During that year, students in the treatment group were learning their AP content through group work and through simulations and debate. In that class, like, everybody's working, everybody's talking, everybody's in groups, everybody's just active. Like, you don't even want to leave the class when you have to they were having a different classroom experience than the control group of students who were relying more heavily on lecture and test prep activities. We learned that Knowledge in Action was a big shift for teachers. They needed to really change how they'd been teaching. And students as well found it hard to change their role. They were used to being recipients of knowledge. They were used to sitting and listening to their teacher's lecture and reading their textbooks. After that first year, we compared students' AP scores. Our overall pattern of results showed Knowledge in Action students outperforming control students on their probability of earning a qualifying score on the AP exams. We saw that pattern of positive results within the AP US government course, within the AP environmental science course, within students from lower income households, and within students from higher income households, and within each of the five districts. I think that's very compelling. There's a belief among some educators and some policymakers that students who've been underserved aren't ready to have student-centered instruction where they're driving their own learning. The idea is that these students need to have teachers delivering content and skills to them, you know, through lecture and textbook, and students need to gain their skills and knowledge that way before they'll be ready to drive their own learning. The results of this study really challenge that notion. I think teachers who've been considering using project-based learning in their advanced placement classes, I think the results of this study gives those teachers reasons to do it.